we just have this planet, so we really need to take care of it. So what I really want to achieve here is for people to actually go back to the reuse culture. Hello, welcome to Cutter 365 with me, Adil Halim. On this episode, Waste Not, Want Not, One Person's Trash, is another person's treasure. These are some proverbs that show caring for the environment through sustainable living is not a new concept. In fact, it's something that's been passed down for generations, transcending culture and ethnicity. I discovered some grassroots initiatives happening right here in Qatar, including during Ramadan, the Muslim holy month, which began in March this year. As the sun sets on Doha's education city, 1,500 people gather in this tent to break their fast together with an eco-friendly twist. So this iftar is a little bit special because we're aiming towards zero waste. So there'll be no food waste in this event and there'll be no waste from the packaging either. So all the way through the cycle, the, the packaging is compostable and biodegradable and all of the excess food waste, it goes into a separate bin and it gets composted and that gets used within the landscaping around education city. In addition to the personal time for reflection during Ramadan, there's also a large community building aspect where Muslims quite literally break bread together. Here at this zero waste iftar in Education City, it takes a communal effort to ensure all food materials are composted and recycled, reducing the community's carbon footprint. So as soon as people finish their meal, they'll get up, they'll walk outside, and we've got two separate bins. So one bin is for the, the dry waste, that's the packaging of the food, and then one bin is for the actual food that's left over. The food waste will get collected and taken to this composting machine. It'll get cycled for 24 hours and then left to rest for 14 days. And then after then, it's turned into compost. This zero waste iftar is one of many green initiatives taking place across the city. These arts work that we use it in school workshops. We transfer uh, plastic and recycled papers into an art piece just to show the kids that we can reuse our stuff and not just uh, trash them, to recycle them. Aisha al Madid believes small actions like this, done by many people, can result in a big impact. She founded the Qatari youth-based initiative Greener Future in 2018, encouraging people to put the planet first that it's a message that I need to take care of the environment and spread this awareness, but not by judging the people, just to explain for them why it's important because it's our environment, it's our planet. We don't have any another planet, there's no planet B. It started back in 2019 uh, as a youth-led platform for the youth, by the youth, uh, to amplify the voices of those that want to make change. Protecting the planet is a key objective of the United Nations 17 Sustainable Development Goals adopted in 2015. To meet these goals locally, Owais Al Salahi helped launch the only youth led UN Good Practices Initiative in the Gulf, SD Generation Network. It all starts with awareness of the goals, it all starts with uh, knowing what the issue is knowing how we can bring forward solutions to the table. Having the youth be at the table, that's something that I fondly believe in. And of course, collaborating and aligning with the same goals is of course uh, a great first step to uh, sustainable development. Back at the Ramadan tent, the zero waste target is still a work in progress, but community leaders have committed to protecting the planet. There's a hadith that says no one really truly believes until they love for their brother or for their sister what they love for themselves. So just like you want that water, just like you want that meal, you got to think that, you know, the person behind you next to you also wants that meal. So, and, and I think that's what we're trying to help people remember with uh, this exercise of uh, being sustainable when they're eating, not wasting, finishing what they have in their box. Suleiman Ba helped organize the community iftar and says it's a pillar of faith. As long as you're thinking about somebody else, I think you just take what it is that you need. Many verses in the Quran that says, Kulu washrabu, eat and drink, wala tusrifu, but don't waste. That idea of taking only what we need from the environment without harming it has very deep roots in Islam. That's why one Bedouin environmental activist is calling on every person in Qatar to plant one tree or preserve one. I came to Ali Talib Al-Hanzeb's farm, but an hour west of Doha, 
to find out why he believes indigenous knowledge can be used to protect the planet. Ali, why is protecting the planet such a passion project for you? We regard plants as the factories of oxygen. God forbid our livestock would be in danger without vegetation. Today we cultivate a variety of plants and trees in order to provide insurance for livestock, insurance for the weather and air purification. How can we learn from traditional methods of cultivating and preserving land, water and nature? First thing, which is the key element, is that we must be cultured. People who go out in the desert should not harm the environment or be enemies to the environment. We must leave the place as it was. Second, we plant the plants in the soil based on where they originate from. Plants in the mountains belong to the mountains, plants in the desert belong to the desert and so on. Third, we select trees during the farming season by considering the positions of stars and areas of rainfall. This approach reduces the amount of attention and care they need. So what are some skills your father and your grandfather taught you about living in harmony with nature? I've lived my entire life with my grandfather, whom I regard as a moving school. He has taught me plenty of things. The first thing I learned was that our natural environment is our home, our way of life, and the core of our existence. So as much as we could, we had to maintain the original water supplies and groundwater itself, and preserve the trees without necessarily having to lumber them. We took what we needed from the ground and left the rest for future generations, which is exactly what sustainability entails. We worked by that instinctively. And so why is it important to empower young people to take action against global climate change? Today's youth are the center of existence. They are our future generation and the labor force. Today, young people are everywhere. It's crucial to enlighten them that this environment belongs to them and their future generations. When our children face environmental challenges in the future, there may not be immediate solutions available. Therefore, I have a message for everyone around the world. Plant trees. Whether it's by the riverside, in blooming fields, or even on rooftops, planting trees is essential because our lives are intertwined with them. Single-use plastics and packaging waste are the biggest culprits for the millions of tons of waste that end up in the world's oceans and landfills. The solution to cut that is simple enough, switching to eco-friendly or biodegradable options. Here in Qatar, more companies are finding ways to dump plastics for good. Lila Humaira met up with a couple of small companies looking to make big changes in the world. These pellets were once a mix of compost and food waste. They'll go into the machine as raw material and within seconds come out as biodegradable cutlery. The eco-friendly disposables are manufactured by the Qatari startup Enavra. It all started in 2019 when Saud Al Ahmadi and Abdullah Shad were still engineering students. We went to certain cafes that had these paper straws that uh, were very challenging to actually drink from. And uh, so we proposed the idea of like providing a good eco-friendly substitute to the owners, and they were very interested. After testing out different materials, Saud and Abdullah's eureka moment came when the two found out that avocado seeds take a much shorter time than others to decompose naturally. And that sparked an idea in the young entrepreneurs. Avocado seeds being one of the leading waste material that did have the uh, fundamental compound that makes it a bioplastic that is also compostable and biodegradable. And so far, the business is bearing fruit. From the factory, Enavra's biodegradable cutleries make their way to cafes and restaurants all around Qatar. And as more companies make the switch to ditch single-use plastics, the decision to partner up with Enavra is a no-brainer for business owners. By switching to Enavra products, you are choosing a higher quality, eco-friendly product that is biodegradable within one year. So you contribute to saving the environment and reducing plastic waste. And also you are choosing a product that is very competitive in pricing compared to the rest of the eco-friendly products. From upcycling to reusing. In another part of Doha, 
Victoria Hamadi is busy handling orders for her eco-friendly business, Refill to Save. The startup encourages people to reuse plastic bottles by refilling them with cleaning products, which it sells. From hand soap to laundry detergent to floor cleaners, Victoria makes it easy for customers by bringing the products to them. This is the refilling station. It's actually in the car. So because we want to be mobile, we want to be available, not just in Doha, but in other um, nearby municipalities too. It's important to be convenient for customers because we are asking them to change their mindset. Today, she's parked her mobile refilling station at Qatar Foundation's Al Saj Academy, where both students and teachers have brought their own empty plastic bottles to get a refill of their choice of cleaning product. For the school, teaming up with Victoria is also a way to educate students and instill small eco-friendly habits in them from young that they'll hopefully keep as adults. Educating the young is also a big part of Victoria's mission, hoping to bring society back to a time that consumed less. What I really want to achieve here is for people to actually go back to the reuse culture because decades ago, that's what we do. We reuse the glass bottles for milk and, and other consumables. And then this came the throwaway culture which became prevalent. I want us to go back to reusing. From green thumbs leading to green solutions and hopefully a greener future, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Cut to 365. And that's all the time we have for now. For more, check out Euronews.com and connect with us through our hashtag. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Cut to 365.